Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Daily Drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and today is Halloween. Thought I'd have a little bit of fun. And even though my trick-or-treating days are long, long in the rearview mirror behind me, I've decided today I'm going to, in pseudo form, be Mac Brown for the sake of this daily drop. I'm not going to look like Mac. I would never do that to him. It would not be fair. I wouldn't give him this nose or anything like that. But I thought I'd just kind of take a little twist here and and do what what I would do as Mac Brown if I were head coach at North Carolina right now with the Tar Heels coming off two bad losses. No other way to you can't sugarcoat it. They're six and two. The six and two is a pretty good record for North Carolina historically at this stage, but this is not the kind of six and two anybody in the program would want. I don't think anybody in the program accepts it, especially considering the fact that in the last two games, the Tar Heels have blown double digit second half leads to two teams that went into those games with combined records of four, nine. And that was with UNC sitting at six and zero and ranked 10th in the country and legitimately looking like a team that could make a push and do something significant. We talked about it so much. I was on a bunch of radio shows, national and regional, uh, local and other places, and I said this team's different. Kirk Herbstreet said this team is different. Rick Neuheisel said this team is different. But maybe they're not. We don't know. We'll know truly how different this team is after the NC State game. And now I'm going to put on my Mac Brown coaching hat. If he even, I guess he does wear a hat when he's coaching in, in games. Here's what I would tell the team. If I'm addressing the team right now, I would focus more on the defense, obviously, because by the way, they have now dropped to number 100 nationally in total defense. I think going into the Miami game, they were 35th. And this is a free fall. And before I put my Mac hat on, I asked him in the press conference Monday, I described it as falling off a cliff. I couldn't really think of another way. And I went back to what I said in the three things with Brandon after the game Saturday night down in Atlanta. And it, it, it seems like a defense that has fallen off a cliff. Cause if you go back in the last nine quarters, beginning with the fourth quarter against Miami, they've given up almost 1300 yards, a lot of points. Miami scored two touchdowns in that quarter. Virginia had 31 points, should have had more. Georgia Tech, 46 points. So I think, yeah, from 35 to 100 that quickly fell over a cliff. All right, so here's what I'd say to the team. And I'm not going to do a Mac impression. I'll leave that to some others in the media. You're losing at the snap. Defensively, they're getting beaten off the snap. What's amazing to me is the team we saw defensively in the third quarter against Miami has been nowhere to be found since then. They were pretty good in the first quarter uh, Saturday night because they got off the field on a couple fourth downs. But the truth is Georgia Tech had at least one first down on 12 of its 13 possessions. Some of us in the press box were talking about, you know, the Jackets are moving in a little bit. But, but stalled. Carolina was able to get up the field, and ultimately the most important statistic is points scored for offense and points allowed for defense. So as long as they kept them out of the end zone, they could rack up as many yards as they want. Wouldn't matter. So they did their job, but it wasn't a work of art. It wasn't the third quarter against Miami. That was the best quarter, most physical quarter defense I've seen from a UNC team since Butch Davis was head coach but they're losing at the snap. They're also not making their run fits. And part of that is losing at the snap. I mean, it's a cascade that begins up front, but the other guys aren't. They they just look quite frankly, I can go back to confusion and pre-snap because they were confused Saturday night and pre-snap. Cedric Gray told us so after the game, but if they're not losing at the, if they're not winning at the point of attack and they're losing too often and they're, They're letting themselves get blocked. When I say that, it's not like they say, okay, go ahead and block me. It's what they're doing at the snap isn't winning in that moment. So therefore they're being blocked. 
and it makes the job that much tougher. It makes it that much harder to make their fits. Mac talked a lot Monday about making fits. We got to make our run fits better. They're also getting out tough. Virginia was more physical. And again, this is part of losing at the snap. This is part of not making your run fits. Virginia was more physical. Georgia Tech was more physical. I thought Carolina played hard, but Georgia Tech was more physical. Their offensive line had a field day. Carolina had no sacks. They had a couple TFLs. That's it. Georgia Tech ran like crazy in that fourth quarter. 246 yards rushing in that quarter. That's not being tough. So you guys need to be tougher. That's right. I'm Mac speaking to the team. The staff needs to adjust more. Gene, you need to adjust more. Why were you in nickel with two and a half minutes left in the game when this team was running the ball down our throats? If you stayed nickel, they kept running it down our throats. Maybe make an adjustment there. I'll go back to being AJ for a second. I asked Gene Monday about the adjustments, about how they were working so well through the first six games. And the Miami game going back that third quarter is a classic example. But And I wrote a piece about the adjustments. And I did a podcast about the adjustments. And when I was on those radio shows, I talked about the adjustments because Gene had figured some things out recognize what he was doing a year ago wasn't working. So he made his own personal adjustments and he was communicating to an older team, a smart team, a mature team, a team with leaders like gray and Huzzy and Rucker and Eccles. And suddenly that's not happening. That communication is not happening. So put my Mac hat back on gene. You've got to make these adjustments. You've got to communicate them to the sidelines that dialogue that you've told us that has been like coach talking to coach when you talk to Cedric when he comes over, that's got to be great. That can never just be good. It has to be great. The adjustments have to be made. And I'll sidebar for a second. Gene did say uh, Monday, when guys are in stress situations, it's a little tougher to do it. Okay. Mac would tell him, you're still going to make it happen. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. The offense has to score. Defense has to get stops. And if adjustments need to be made, Make the adjustments for the offense. You guys leave too many points in the field. They scored a ton, but they should have scored more. Fourth and seven, ball at the 21. They attempt a field goal when they're up 42-39. Is that maybe a situation where you guys should be more aggressive? Chip Lindsey said Monday that if there was maybe – a few yards, a few less yards to go for the first down. They probably would have gone for it. Maybe the defense wasn't stopping Georgia tech moving that to a six point game. I don't know if that would have done much. So maybe that aggressiveness that we were told earlier in the year was going to be a part of things should be there, but maybe with the offense, not scoring touchdowns in the fourth quarter this year, maybe Mac figured that he would just take the points while he could. So, Mac, back to the offense. Stop leaving points on the field. They kick field goals late in the fourth quarter or throughout the fourth quarter against Pittsburgh. Field goals against Syracuse. Didn't do anything. Didn't score touchdowns against Miami. The one touchdown scored Saturday night in the fourth quarter was the first fourth quarter touchdown since the Minnesota game on September 16th. Offense is leaving points on the field. Now, Max message to the team would continue. All right. So we've established that there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to fix. We need to be more physical. Gene told you got told the media that you guys are going to work on open or tackling in space more this week. So get at it. But the other thing he could say, you can still achieve a big season. And I know the fans don't want to hear this. The Tar Heels can still achieve a big season. They're six and two right now. Twitter's on fire with insanity about people being upset about this. And I get it. It makes sense. I understand it, especially because so many people thought that this was going to be different. They thought it was different. People like me told you it was different. So Max message to the media message to the fans was, Hey, six and two, a lot of schools would like to be this. But the reality in the Keenan Football Center is they're not saying that. They're looking for they're looking forward. 
They're looking ahead. They've got Campbell this week, and then you've got Duke at home at Clemson at State. So he's telling them, look, you can still have a great season. 10 and 2 for North Carolina football is a great season. And if they close, if you guys close out winning these last four, it means you'll beat your two biggest rivals and you'll win on the road at the program that has been the standard in this league for the last decade. One of the three best programs nationally in the last decade. So that's a pretty solid way to end the regular season. The seniors have a ton to play for. Guys like Drake May, who will be playing his last few games at Carolina, he's got a ton to play for. Go on a winning note. Mac told us all offseason, nine wasn't enough. Well, they're six and two with four left. Got to win all four to not be at nine. Got to win all four to not be at nine. So get back on track this week. Staff, make the adjustments that need to be made. Larry Porter, about those pump blocks, fix it, man. Fix the shield. The shield is an issue. A pump block in three of the last five games. There is suddenly a laundry list of things. Got to get to work this week and fix them. And you've got to play clean, efficient football against Campbell. Whether or not people think Campbell's coming at the right time or whether they should play him or not, right now doesn't matter. It's the next game on the schedule, and this team has to play well. This team has to feel good about itself. So they have an opportunity still, but they got a lot to fix. It was a bad look Saturday night on defense, an awful look. Mac said awful like eight times in his post-game press conference, said it again Monday, and he's right. It was awful. I said it went off a cliff defensively, and I'm going to stand by it. I think it did. The more I think about it, I think those were the right words. Went off a cliff. Now they can climb back up. They can scale back up beginning this weekend. The last three teams they play after this weekend are not great offensive teams. So the defense has an opportunity to flex some and post some solid numbers. Not doing so against those three teams that are struggling offensively would be an awful, awful look and likely lead to a loss. So, guys, there's a lot to play for. They still have a chance to go to a solid bowl. Ten and two in a month from now. A lot of you that don't want to listen to this, a lot of you that were ripping Mac to shreds as I'm tweeting out all of his comments during the press conference on Monday, you guys will be happy at 10 and two. You'll be happy if you beat Duke, win at Clemson, and win at State. No matter how it happens, you'll be happy to win. Now, you'll pick at stuff because that's what people do, and I think in year five, you should. I think when a team 10 days ago, 11 days ago, looked like it was possibly a club that could slide in through the back door or side door to the CFP, I think right now it's fair to pick at them, and I think it's fair to pick the rest of the way. But they know in the Keenum Football Center what the deal is. They know what needs to be fixed, and it's a lot of stuff. And I think they're surprised. I think Mac was very surprised the other night. He slept like an hour or two after the game at like 9 o'clock in the morning, went back at it. That was tough. And they got some things to fix. They have personnel. They've shown everybody what they can do. Now they have to do it. So in my modified attempt at being Mac Brown talking to the team. That's the message. There's a lot of stuff there, but the composition on the roster, the plan that we've seen work before should be good enough for them to close this season strong. There's still a lot to play for. And who knows in a month from now, we could be talking about, boy, how on earth did that happen for two weeks? Or it could be the beginning of something unpleasant or it could go off in another direction. College football can be that way sometimes. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Is there something I missed? Is there something that you would emphasize? Maybe I didn't emphasize as much. Do you think the last two weeks are just too bad? What the heck weeks? And you're going to toss them out and you think this group will finish strong? Or are you significantly, seriously, legitimately concerned? Let us know. Comment on Twitter. Comment on our message boards, comment on Facebook. And remember, 
Go over to TarHillIllustrated.com. That is our site for just $8.33 a month. You can be a premium subscriber too. We've got a lot of intel over there, guys. Stuff I'm not going to say here. So go on over there. Be an insider. Be the guy in your office or the guy at the bar that knows more than anybody else. Go on over to our site. You can be that guy. And if not, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you get updates every time we upload a video. And you know that's frequent, and it's going to be a lot more coming up now because basketball season is just about here. We'll be doing double duty, guys. We'll be rolling a ton of stuff out, a ton of stuff. So make sure you know each time we upload a video. I'm AJ, and I'll see you tomorrow.